This is Shondell Joyce, and welcome to Pastel Painting, Water Reflections in a Fall Morning. Before I do a painting, I always evaluate my reference photo for how I can improve upon it and make it a better painting. Using the rule of thirds and the intersection of those lines, which is where I want my focal points to line up, I change the composition slightly from my original photo. So I'm moving the boat up a little. I'm adding a second boat in the background. This is a color study which helped me to lay out the pastels which I'm using in this series. In the box you can see the whole set of pastels but here they are one at a time. What I'm using is a modified complementary palette of uh, oranges and blues. So you have true orange, true blue, reddish orange, yellow orange, uh, dark blue, greenish blue, and blue violet, and different versions of colors that you would get by mixing them. Uh, most of them are soft pastels except for the two hard pastels that I'm starting off with. I'm using a reused ampersand pastel board. I'm a big proponent of zero waste, so I never waste a board. I'm putting my crosshairs on to show the rule of thirds and I'm lining up the distant shoreline with the, f the top third line putting in my focal points of the two boats right now so that way I can see where where those boats will wind up in the composition. I'm blocking in with a hard pastel because a hard pastel you can always go on top of it with softer pastel, but not the other way around. So I'm lightly sketching the figures on the boat, and I'm just indicating them. I'm, I'm giving the gesture of the figures. I don't want to put a whole lot of detail in those figures. Then I'm using the whole side of the pastel and putting in some of the darks in the water reflection. The darks are the backbone of the whole painting, so I want to spend some time and really lay in that whole pattern of darks. At this point you can see how the previous painting is making a wonderful underpainting for this one. Uh, part of the reason I don't use underpaintings is because I often will reuse surfaces and that automatically comes with an underpainting. Now that I have most of my darks in place, I'm just checking perspective. I'm making sure that the darkest darks are in the foreground and that what I have in the foreground is way darker than the boat that's in the middle ground and the background. There is the skeleton of the painting. I have my dark values in place. Now it's time to put in some beautiful color. This particular painting is um, based on a reference photo that's of Diamond Lake in New York. So it's a, a family of fisher folk, which is like a father and son, or maybe a grandfather and grandson. So I really like how the fisher folk in the boat come forward and the mountain and the trees go back. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some cool color on those trees. This is the darks in the tree line which you can see in the inset photo. To make those darks recede I'm using blue and blue green. Now you really want to have your cool colors towards the back, your blues and so forth, and then your warmer colors towards the front, but that doesn't mean that you can't use blue in the foreground. So I always put a little bit of it in the water reflection, just like I'm going to put a lot of warm color in the fall foliage in those trees. This is a dark blue. It's a blue violet actually. It's got a little bit of red in it, and I'm going to use it to punch up some of the darks especially in the water reflection. Oddly enough, reflections are almost always darker than the actual object. So I'm using a lot of that dark blue-violet in the foreground. 
It also contains enough warm to uh, warm up the coolness of the blue. Next, <coughs> I'm indicating very lightly that this is water. I'm using a beautiful reddish violet color that's light and almost neutral. It's it's red violet. Violet can go either way. It's not warm. It's not cool. But this particular one has a, a little neutralness to it that I really love. And it's going to help create a sense of mist on that back mountain. So I reflected it in the water with some horizontal strokes and then put it up inside the tree line with some vertical strokes. Next, I'm putting in a touch of green and this is a lighter yellow green and I'm doing it to emphasize that the trees towards the middle are warmer and lighter and I'm reflecting it as I go. When I'm doing water reflection, everything I put above the water line, I also put below the water line. So while I have the color in my hand, I reflect it. This happens to be the color of the boat. I'm just working it into the trees and the tree reflection so that it's in multiple places. If you put color, like a shot of color, especially a vibrant reddish orange like that, in just one spot, it becomes an eye magnet and it's hard for you to tear your eye away. But if you include it in a couple of other places, then it helps to create color harmony and lead you through the composition. So you'll notice while I have a color in my hand, I often find other places to work it in. This is a beautiful yellow orange color. It's like a school bus color, cadmium yellow medium. And I'm working it into the trees towards the center. These are trees that are closest to the water line. And I'm creating some texture by using the face of the pastel and pushing it down fairly hard. Then when I do the reflection in the water, I make my marks horizontally. And that reads more like water reflection. Those horizontal marks make the water lay flat. It's important that the water always have a different texture to it than the trees in the background. Otherwise, then it becomes undiscernible where the water ends and the trees begin. So I'm reflecting a little bit of yellow all around through the water, through the composition. Now I have a really good basis in place. So I'm working in some of the darker purple colors. And this purple helps to differentiate individual trees. I always try to paint trees as value masses and color masses rather than individual trees. But I differentiate uh, one tree from another by the value or the color temperature. In this case, I'm just putting some darks here and there and some texture so that the the trees have a, a rough and scumbled look to them. The purple also is a complement to the yellow in the tree and really creates some beautiful complementary color. Now I'm highlighting just an edge of one tree. This creates a focal edge. It helps to pull the eye through the composition it's a yellow white. I'm not using any pure white. There's a little bit of white on my support showing through, but I'm going to be covering that up. So I'm using some of the color that I just put in the trees and making my strokes as horizontal as possible behind my two fisher folk and creating the illusion of water reflection and water ripples. So the lighter color creates a halo effect around the boat and the boaters. And it will also uh, create the effect of ripples on the surface of the water. So I want to have some nice surface that's a little bit different than the trees. The texture should always be different. 
Now I'm just unifying some of those reflections, pulling them down, and then making horizontal marks. Water reflection is all about horizontal and vertical mark making, and it helps to make these beautiful textures inside the water, which read like a glassy surface. At this point, it's time to bring in the paintbrush. So your fingers are your paintbrush. With the paintbrush, I'm just lightly touching, and wherever I touch, the color blends under my hand. So by touching it, I'm mixing together the layers of pastel. You want to be judicious about where you blend because you break the pastel and you mix it together, which dulls the color and, and makes it react just as paint would if you were mixing two colors together on a palette. So I blend to give a sense of texture, to soften some edges, lose them, and to make your attention really zero in on where I want your eye to go through that composition. I make sure I didn't lose my vibrant colors by adding them back. So I'm putting in some of the gold and yellow, this quintessential fall color. That creates beautiful texture on those treetops. The treetops clearly look different than what's in the water. I'm bringing some of the light color from the water up onto the edge of the tree, creating a focal edge, beautiful texture. It's dappling and daubing. So the more you daub the color on, the less differentiated the trees become, the more they look like masses. So the trees are now clearly in the background. They're background singers. I really don't want them to compete too much with the boat. I want my darkest and warmest colors to be in the foreground. So I'm just bringing some of those colors through and reflecting them in the water. Now I'm going to flip the painting upside down so it's easier for me to do the water reflections. I flip my reference photo upside down at the same time and then daub the color on by tapping with the pastel. The daubing creates texture in the water and will read like individual leaves without me having to paint the reflection of every individual leaf. So I daub a bunch of color. It helps to break up the reflection and then I'll go back and just lightly touch here and there to push some of those uh, daubs, make them less textural. So you can see a real difference between the trees in the background reflecting and the trees in the foreground. Lots more texture. Next comes the wake behind the boat, which should always be uh, breaking the surface of the water and making it lighter. There's a wake behind the second boat second boat is further away. It's not clearly visible, but it hits perfectly on one of the intersections of the rule of third line, and it helps to balance out my composition. So now you can see 90% of the painting. It's mostly finished. I will take a few minutes to add the figures, and that's that. Join me every week on